Hello, and welcome to the first Faintly Saintly time capsule. Let me open with a question. What do you think of when you think of gaming in the 1990s? Were you there to enjoy it, or can you only experience it retroactively? When I think back, I can fondly remember a number of different eras within that decade. My earliest gaming memory is of the Amiga 500, which my family had before they even had me. Please take a box. Then came the Super Nintendo, where I spent so many afternoons alone and with friends playing Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Country and Mega Man X for hours on end. And then somewhere in the mid 90s, before I got my hands on the Nintendo 64, along came the family computer, a compact presario all in one, which opened my world to a whole new range of games Bummer. and experiences. Damn. Recently, I was digging through some old boxes that had been packed up in a move and forgotten for years, and I discovered a trove of our old gaming gear. And as I was poking through the old demo discs and gaming magazines and obsolete cables, I found some really cool stuff from my childhood, and that served as the inspiration for why I wanted to create this video and really open up this old time capsule of mine. In particular, it was this one little booklet that I found that really sparked the feeling of nostalgia in me. This is the original manual for Load Runner, The Legend Returns, and when I came across this, instantly flashbacks of hours whittled away on the old compact came washing over me, hours that I spent running, digging and climbing around as Jake Peril, the Load Runner himself. Somehow this manual fared quite well over the years, much better than the used and abused manuals for my Super Nintendo game collection, sorry, Clay Fighter, complete with images and notes some story elements and details of the various items featured in the game. This booklet also features a handwritten file path for the game install, which must have been important to know at one point in time, and what appears to be a hastily scrawled phone message taken by my younger self to pass on to my parents. Who was Sue? Did I pass on that message? We may never know. Interestingly, my handwriting has apparently not improved since the mid-90s. If you're not familiar with Load Runner, the original game was created in 1983 by Doug Smith and has since spawned countless spin-offs, ports and remakes featuring on systems from the NES to the Switch. It's a 2D platformer puzzler with single screen levels that require quick thinking and sharp reflexes, forcing you to think two steps ahead to avoid being trapped, crushed or eaten by a mad monk. The Legend Returns is a 1994 remake featuring all new graphics, sounds, music and other modern indulgences. This wave of nostalgia led me to search for a way to relive the memories of this glorious old game, but everything indicated that modern operating systems were not going to play nice with it. So the search continued, and that's when I came across this devlog from a team called Quark Robot. Quark Robot have spent the last several years lovingly and painstakingly recreating the authentic experience of Load Runner Online, The Mad Monk's Revenge, somewhat of an expansion to The Legend Returns, and extending the compatibility to modern operating systems, including Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. A testament to their love of the game, this faithful port features all of the original quirks and glitches that you could experience in the original release, but it also includes an option to fix these if you so choose. Also deviating from the original is the expansion of the multiplayer cooperative option from two to up to four players, and the already extensive and incredibly fun level editor now has a few quality of life additions as well. If you also harbour nostalgic yearning for Load Runner, or if you're now just interested to check it out, please go support this fantastic project. I'll leave a link to the website in the description below. So, onto the game. How do you define Load Runner, exactly? It's deceptively simple, yet complex at the same time. 
the graphics are dated but equally timeless and somehow these simple backgrounds, tile themes and character animations still elicit the same wonder that they evoked in me as a child. Puzzles steeply drop from super simple to mind numbingly difficult to downright impossible. At least that's how a very young faintly saintly felt about it. The game does well at introducing new mechanics and teaching you how they work before it ramps up the difficulty and really starts testing you. The first few levels are as simple as walking, climbing and digging to collect all the treasure on the level, but before long, hazards such as the Mad Monks introduced. One level acts as a playground for you to run around and work out how the Mad Monks behave. Then the next will challenge you to exploit their movement patterns in order to proceed. Before long, you've moved on from the vibrant green jungles and enter the caves, with the next group of levels featuring a new theme and some new toys to play with. While initially, your only form of defense from the Mad Monks is to dig pitfall traps to slow down or temporarily unalive them, levels can now offer the dangerous but powerful bombs. These indiscriminate explosives are a hazard to not only the monks, but also the player and any destructible tile in its range. Careful planning is needed to avoid getting yourself stuck in a crater or cornered by a chain reaction when an exploding bomb ignites a neighboring bomb. And so it goes, as you delve deeper into the almost 190 original levels in the game, new tools and tricks emerge. Snare traps, befuddling gas, hidey holes, pickaxes, jackhammers, teleporters, and more. And yes, that is just the original level pack. The extensive level editor ensures that loyal fans have been creating and sharing puzzle packs of their own for decades. My favorite thing to do as a child was to jump into the level editor to make a cozy little lab full of traps and tools on the dusty old industrial themed backdrop, just to play around with the game mechanics. Hopefully, thanks to the efforts of Quark Robot, we can continue to see a resurgence in the load runner map making community. I never did finish Load Runner, The Legend Returns as a kid, try as I might. I replayed the first handful of levels enough to know them like the back of my hand. But as the difficulty ramped up, my developing brain quickly reached its limit and then probably got frustrated and switched over to The Incredible Machine or Crayola Art Studio instead. Even still, Load Runner has a special place in my heart and in my mind as a defining part of my childhood and one of the first games I really learned to appreciate and understand, even if it did occasionally result in nightmares of waking up trapped in a puzzle room, alone and with nothing but a bunch of exploding bombs, hungry monks and nowhere to hide. Thank you for joining me on this nostalgic trip down memory lane. I hope some of you might share my enthusiasm for this absolute gem, but if not, I hope it's enticed you to go check it out for yourself. I also want to thank Quark Robot for their hard work and dedication to reviving this classic and encourage all of you to check out their work and offer them your support. This is a little bit of a change of pace for me compared to my usual gameplay videos, but if this is something you'd like to see more of, please let me know. Every view, every like, every subscription and every comment means so much to me. So know that if you're still here watching and listening, I see you and I appreciate you. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.